Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar session. Uh, it's on effective lean IT transformation, and it's uh, the power of the week start. My name is Alex Mazurek with Clint Wellington Redwood, and I'll be your host during today's session. So as I mentioned, I'm Alex, that is me in the top left corner uh, below my face is uh, Niels Loader. He is our presenter today. There's a couple things I want to cover for the audience uh, right before we begin. I just want to let everyone, everybody know that the uh, all audio is being transmitted via your computer and everything is muted on your end so we cannot hear you but you can hear us obviously. But if you have any questions at all, I want to voice that question at any point during this webinar. Um, there's a questions panel on your GoToWebinar screen. Please enter the question that you have there at any point during this presentation and we'll have a designated session right at the end. Um, you won't need to go anywhere else. It'll be right at the end in which I will read the questions aloud and our presenter today, Niels, will answer them for all to hear. And last off, uh, this webinar is being recorded, so if you need to leave for any reason, um, everyone who registered will receive a link to view the recording uh, later on in an email follow-up. So that's about a few things about our organization, Quint Wellington Redwood. Um, this year we celebrated our 25-year anniversary. We started in 1992 over in Amsterdam. But today we're a completely global company with offices uh, all over the world on just about every single continent. Um, just a couple highlights I want to point out really quick is that we're founding members of both the Lean IT Association, or LIDA for short, and also DASA, which is the DevOps Agile Skills Organization. Um, uh, we've also been selected as the world's best outsourcing advisor by the IA AOP the last four years running now in the areas of quality, delivery, and innovation. And this is the last little highlight I want to touch upon that I think is pretty cool, that um, we train 30 thousand people uh, professionally uh, uh, in everything from things like idle, but also the new stuff, uh, lean IT, DevOps, and, um, and, and so, so forth. So these are the key areas in which Quint helps our clients. One, we help them organize their IT. Two, blend technology with their business. Three, innovate across their business ecosystems. Four, help their uh, teams transform to high performance. Five, uh, help them be smart with their data. And uh, last off, uh, with the digital transformation, help them digitize their products and services. So now I want to uh, quickly introduce our presenter, Niels Loader. Uh, we're very lucky to have him with us today. Uh, he's a prominent figure in the Lean IT community. He's the content board lead with Lita, and he's also the chief examiner of Lean IT at APMG. Uh, Niels Loader, thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Alex. It's, uh, it's great to be here. Um, and uh, we're going to talk today about something that I like uh, very much. Um, we're going to talk about a, a simple little thing called the weak start. Now, uh, the, when, when you do a Lean IT transformation, um, there are all kinds of tools and there are all kinds of uh, activities, rituals that we build into uh, organizations to help them become more lean. Um, and one of the uh, ones that is most powerful, the ones that really uh, make a, a huge impact on, on teams is basically spending an hour a week with uh, a team doing what we call the week start. And I'd like to tell you a bit more about that um, uh, during the course of the next 20-25 uh, minutes. Okay, so um, let me just say, we'll, we'll, we'll look at the challenge and you know how you can actually take steps to do this yourself um, and how you can help your uh, your teams and what it'll basically look like when you've achieved uh, um, your uh, success with uh, with the week start. Okay, um, so let's let's just look at the challenge briefly. If you if you look at uh, today's world of IT, we're moving more and more towards uh, teams of people uh, creating value for customers. Um, and this means that we're moving away a little bit from the, uh, the traditional uh, technical uh, teams which where where you see people not having a lot of uh, a lot of um, uh, work to do together, they're basically uh, all kind of individuals looking at part of the uh, the IT landscape. Um, so what we're trying to do is is get our teams on track. And what I find is that um, teams don't have a lot of uh, view of actually what they're meant to be doing and how they're meant to be spending their time. If, if you look at, take an average team, you know, does, does that team know how they did last week? So did they perform well? Did they not perform well? Um, do they know what they're going to do this week? 
um, one of the key issues is that they have no idea most of the time whether the, the, week, the work that they've got planned is actually realistic. Are they going to be able to achieve the goals um, that, they, that they're setting? Um, and are they, uh, as I said, realistic or are they too optimistic or maybe just too easy to, to uh, achieve? Um, do we actually know what the customer thinks about the performance? Um, and, and does the team itself spend the time understanding how they're working together um, and uh, working out how they can improve their collaboration? These are all questions that I find that teams uh, don't really have the answers to and therefore the team leads and the, uh, the, the, the management hierarchy above them doesn't know the answer to these questions either. So let's try and work out whether we're, uh, how we can answer these questions. But first, before we go into that, let's just look at why teams are so important. Um, teams are really the core of value delivery within IT. Um, it's uh, the, the, the days where we had heroes war running around our IT organization, well, they, they still exist to a certain extent, but that's not a tenable situation. It's not a situation that's going to take us into the future. Um, if if you look at uh, Agile and, and DevOps, which are really uh, based on lean principles, um, and if you look at lean itself, we're, we're looking more and more at putting together groups of people who really deliver value together so that they can take integral responsibility for the delivery of that value of the uh, of the product that they're actually supporting. Um, we want to give them the autonomy to do that um, and we want to make sure that they uh, can help the people within those teams to de develop uh, the potential that they have. And uh, one of the things that we see within Lean is that, that teams are really the basis for continuous improvement. It's not individuals who solve problems on their own, it's about the teams uh, solving problems and making sure they're taking steps further. Um, before we go further into uh, looking at uh, the weak side, you know, let's just have a, a little check on what is a team. So a, a team is a, a small number of people with complementary skills who are committed to a common purpose, set of performance goals, and approach for which they hold themselves mutually responsible. Now, this is different to a group of people. A group of people, um, in essence, are not really that interested interested in each other's work. Let me give you an example. Let's uh, take um, a, a so-called team of database uh, experts um, and look at what they're working on. What they do is they support uh, all kinds of applications, um, but each individual database administrator actually um, supports maybe one or two teams. Um, and when you bring the team of database administrators together, um, they're not really that interested in each other's work. Um, they may have some, uh, some interest in um, how the databases are being set up, but each application wants things in a different way. So we basically see that the, the DBAs just really don't talk to each other that much. And we're Whereas the conversations that they're having with the application teams they're supporting are very rich and very, very important for uh, the improvement of uh, the, uh, the, the quality of this, the service. And, and this is really where you see the difference between well, what's a team and what's a, uh, a group. Um, doing a weak start, by the way, with a group is, um, is quite difficult because uh, you need to have people who are interested in each other's work. Now, um, just looking at teams, why are teams so important? Why is it that we're focusing so much on getting uh, teams uh, to, to work well? That's, it's because uh, teams are very, very powerful. Um, there was some research done uh, in the 1920s by a guy called Kohler. He uh, worked at the University of Berlin. And he worked with the rowing teams there to work out why, um, what, 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 how people respond uh, to uh, teamwork. And what they saw was that individuals uh, would row a particular speed, and as a team, they would be able to uh, row a whole lot faster. And so even the poor performance 
members were, were able to perform a lot better uh, and when they were part of a team. And in fact, you see the same thing happening um, in the, uh, the US relay team in Beijing. Um, in fact, each of the uh, swimmers swam a, a personal best in terms of their, their time uh, as, as part of the team um, as opposed to when they did their individual personal best. In fact, in, uh, Jason Lazak took a one and a half seconds off his personal time, uh, personal best time. So this is where the, the power of teams really works. We're even getting um, uh, performers, uh, the, the good performers to, to perform better, and even the, uh, the, the, the lesser performers are helped to create, to deliver a higher level of um, performance. So the whole... Uh, aspect of getting teams to work together well is very, very important. Um, and as I said, the, the weak start is part of that, uh, the, is one of the rituals that you need to get a team performing properly. So when we look at, a road, at the, uh, the weak start, what do we then need to do? Well, let's look at why we need the weak start. Well, it's all about goal setting. It's about setting priorities, it's about ensuring that there's planning, it's, uh, we make sure that everybody in the team uh, contributes to the result. Um, and uh, what it helps is to develop a sense of purpose in the team. Um, and so these are, these are very, very powerful aspects um, that, that really help the, a, a team to, to gel. So what is a weak start? Well, it's a, a, a once a week meeting that should take no longer than an hour. Um, it's not optional. Uh, all the, the members of the team need to be there and the team lead. And we use uh, the weak board uh, in terms of a visual uh, support to, to actually help um, run the, the weak start properly. So what is the, where do we start? Well, we start with what we call the goals of the week. Now, a goal of the week is a product or deliverable that will be created this particular week. Um, and it may be that you're producing a draft version of um, a design, or you may be producing uh, a first version of uh, a program or a bit of code. Um, it doesn't necessarily need to be a completely finished product, but it needs to be a product that the team can use uh, to build on um, in, in the future. Now, um, we basically use sticky notes uh, in which we describe what's the product or deliverable at the end of the week that we can see. Um, so we don't want activities on these post-its. We want a, a clear deliverable. We want to know which team members are involved and how much time they expect to spend on producing this, uh, this product. Um, and generally what you'll find is there are uh, bits of work that will take between an hour and maybe eight to 12 hours. Um, and the idea is that we uh, share with one another in the team what are the key deliverables that need to be produced this week. Um, and uh, then we also know, um, because we know which team members are involved, who's going to be doing what. Um, and if we see one person's name coming up too much, then we know that we need to uh, balance the work. Um, now, the idea is that we can then uh, prioritize the work by understanding whether we have uh, taken on too much work. Now, how does that work? Um, what we basically see is we have a team with a bunch of people in it, and together they represent a number of hours of work. Um, and these, uh, these hours of work, uh, we can basically match with the goals of the week and work out whether we're uh, trying to deliver too much or not. Um, we, we know who's going to be available in the team. We know how many hours they can work. Um, and then we can basically build a weekly resource plan. Um, and this is the, one of the strong points of, uh, of the, the week uh, start is that we're getting a very clear idea of what goals of the week we're trying to achieve, but also, is it realistic what we're trying to do? Now, let's look into that weekly resource plan a little bit uh, deeper. What we do, if you look at the top of the, uh, the screen, we see that we have uh, a, a, a basic amount of hours. In this case, it was 300 
in 52 hours. Now, the first thing we always do is take 10% of that time off because for whatever reason, we will lose time. The, it, uh, the people going to the loo, having lunch, doing, having breaks, doing uh, things, but you will lose that time. Can you find it? Um, I doubt it. Uh, in, in the years that I've been doing week starts, for some reason or other, this 10% this of time, is just it, it just disappears. Now, the next most important thing is that we reserve time for the work that has to be done this week anyway. Um, and this is where a lot of planning uh, goes wrong in, uh, in IT organizations is we try and tend to reserve time to do projects, but we don't really reserve time to do the work that needs to be done. In, in this case, you'll see things, uh, the, the, the key aspects you, you always see are incidents, service requests, standard changes, maybe uh, one problem a week, and you need to reserve time for your team meetings. And also, you need to reserve time for your operational activities. And the idea is to, to look at uh, the, the statistics of, of the last six to eight weeks and see what are the average, what's the average number of incidents or service requests that this team is reserving, uh, receiving per, um, per week. And specifically reserving time to actually um, deal with the, this average number of incidents. Now we know that maybe we're going to get more incidents, maybe we'll get less. It's always about an average, but we need to plan and reserve time. Um, and once we've reserved this time, we end up with, in this case, we can see 166 hours, um, which are available to uh, actually carry out um, the, the goals of the week. Uh, here we are looking at more of a uh, realistic view of actually how much time is available for the um, uh, for the organization to actually uh, do its work, for the team members to actually carry out the work that they need to do. Um, and what you see basically at the end of the, uh, um, at the bottom is how much time is there available. If that is a positive number, then we know that we have the flexibility in our week to actually um, maybe pick up some ad hoc work that comes in or last minute stuff that happens, or maybe even deal with an excess of incidents um, or more incidents than we've actually planned to, to, uh, to deal with. Okay, so these are things, uh, this is a, a weekly resource plan that uh, works uh, psychologically in a very important way. What it does is it makes the team members realize that there is time to do the work that they want to do. Um, and that uh, think, uh, you know, that every time uh, there's an incident, they know that they have that time to solve it. Now, many times we'll find that, uh, that people will not achieve their week goals and will say, yeah, yeah, well, that's because we had an incident. But actually, it's not because we had an incident. It's because we did poor planning or we did, there were other reasons why we uh, didn't achieve uh, our goals. Um, and this is a very important discussion because we see more the, uh, the underlying reasons why uh, we're not achieving the goals we're we can we'd aim to achieve. So our weekly resource plan is a very important aspect of actually uh, making sure that the, uh, the team uh, has a realistic workload for the week. The next aspect that we look at is the voice of the customer. So we, we want to know what, uh, what our customer thinks of what we do. And generally, uh, organizations do this once uh, once a year, um, I like to do this on a continuous basis with with a team, and making sure that uh, that the team, when they come into contact with a customer, basically ask three simple questions: What do we do for you that has value? What do we do well, and what could we do better? It's as simple as that. Um, and from that, uh, the team members get some feedback, um, and the idea is that they bring this feedback uh, back in its raw form, put it on the board, and discuss it. So that the, 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 the team needs to just analyze what the customer is saying and determine what actions need to be carried out. Um, and it doesn't mean that every single time you have an uh, interaction with the customer that you have to ask these questions, but it's about asking questions on a regular basis to different people. And this helps us to get a view of whether we're on track or not in the customer's eyes. The next thing we look at is the team itself. And we do what's 
uh, called a team barometer, which is a, a series of questions that we ask within the team to see whether the team is happy. Um, so we'll be looking at things like, do you feel like you have the autonomy to act? Uh, do you feel that you know the goals of the team? Um, do you feel like uh, you're uh, contributing to this team? Uh, these are the, the kind of questions that we'll ask. Um, and it brings together the team uh, and, and sometimes you get very, very disappointing results in terms of that the, the team scores low. Um, but it, these are all just uh, uh, results that help us to understand what we need to do to get the team more active and more uh, interested in each other's work and uh, producing the results we need to produce. And last but not least, we need to look at uh, performance. And basically, we look at two, uh, a maximum of two different performance indicators. And generally speaking, I would look at uh, things like uh, incidents, how are we performing in, uh, in terms of um, operational uh, um, availability of our uh, system um, and uh, an indicator in in terms of changes. These are the, basically the, uh, the, the simple uh, performance indicators that the team would need to look at to understand how they're doing. Now, obviously, this, this sounds all very simple, um, but uh, so, sometimes uh, as you uh, try and implement these new ways of working, uh, the, um, you end up with uh, some a few problems. Well, one of them is, is going too fast. Generally, I'll uh, build up a, a, a weak start um, as I did uh, in, the, uh, in the presentation. And maybe sometimes just doing the goals of the week for maybe two weeks, two, three weeks with the team before moving on to including the customer, the team, and the, the performance indicators. Um, and yeah, the, the week start, the week board is, is a tool, but it's all about the team. So you really need to look at what, what problems are the team facing and how can we help to solve those, those problems. Um, we, we find that sometimes team leads kind of think, well, this is a team thing, so I, I don't need to be there, um, or I can be there once every three um, week starts. Now, it's important that the, the team lead and even uh, higher management um, actually uh, come to the, the week starts to show their commitment to the goals that the uh, team is trying to achieve. Um, and it is about building a ritual. It is about making sure that the team has a clear, uh, its own way of, of doing uh, a week start. So you, we start with the standard and they develop their own way of, of doing it, as long as it leads to the same result. Um, and what I found is some managers tend to give up at the first sign of resistance, and you will get resistance because uh, it's a it's a slightly different way of uh, doing a weekly team meet, um, and it it shows more uh, detail in terms of how the team's doing, um, and this can feel threatening uh, to some of the people in the team, but. If you per, uh, persevere, and uh, generally you'll see that you do between six and ten week starts, and, and then it'll be part of the, the team's uh, natural way of working. Um, and basically what you see is that the, the team ends up with very clear goals, um, and the, the, the most important thing is that they know that they have the time to do the work. And this leads to a much lower stress environment. It, it means that uh, uh, it's, it's clear for each of the team members what they're doing um, and they're able to deal with ad hoc work coming in in a, in a very relaxed way because they say, well, either we have the time for it, in which case the, the team lead will choose what uh, can be done, what can't be done, or we don't have time and we'll move that work to the next week. And that will depend on uh, you know, how, how um, important this ad hoc work is. Yeah, but it, it means that the team does have the, uh, the security to say, well, this is the plan for this week. Anything else we'll, we'll, we can pick up next week. Okay, so how do you start? Well, it's, it's quite simple. You just practice and then you start. Um, it's, uh, we see with, um, with 
team leads that it's it's good to do a, a dry run. Um, it's good to understand the numbers before you go into the team. It's good to share those numbers with the team before you start a week start. But then it's about just starting it and doing it and and. Uh, sharing with the team that you're learning as a team lead as well um, and that you'll learn together to do um, the, the week start in, in the, the way that we're looking to, to achieve it. Okay, so that's really um, a, a very, very powerful way of really ensuring that teams can um, get themselves in shape at the beginning of a week and really get their uh, clarity on the goals they're going to achieve. Now that's really what I wanted to uh, share with you uh, uh, today. Um, Alex, are there any questions? Yes, there are, Niels. Thank you for the excellent presentation. Um, the first question that we have here is, how does, um, how does this all fit in with my daily stand-up? Yeah, the, the, uh, what we generally do is we, we use um, the daily stand-up as a way of um, checking the progress of our week goals. So we say we'll, we'll have our week start on the Monday and then on the Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we'll do a daily stand-up to kind of check whether we're uh, achieving um, the goals, whether we're on track, and if we're not on track, uh, what decisions do we need to take to actually make sure that we're, um, we're going to get back on track. And so the, the two mechanisms work together in, uh, uh, to make sure that, that a team actually gets its, um, its products and, and services sorted out. Okay. And the uh, next question that we have here, Niels, is um, I do, I do biweekly sprints with my teams already. Um, do they still need to do a week start? Yeah, that's an interesting one because, yeah, you, you see that there's a, there's a lot of um, teams using Scrum um, or other kind of maybe calling it Agile um, and, or in DevOps we're doing uh, sprints of two weeks. And what I find is that um, it's still useful to do that week start. Even though you've done your sprint planning, um, what you see is that if you have that moment that you talk about a week start together and what are we going to achieve this week, you, you end up balancing out the work just that little bit better than what you see in, in sprints. Uh, what you tend to see is that in the first week we'll be doing a bunch of stuff but maybe not pushing ourselves and then all of a sudden in the second week there's this kind of panic of getting, uh, getting the work finished. Um, and um, what you see with the week start is that you're able to balance the work out more easily. I find that people, maybe, I don't know, maybe it's a limitation of, of people in general, but it, that, that chunk of time, the week, is something that we can all oversee quite well and uh, that we can all uh, manage quite well. Um, but as soon as it becomes two weeks or three weeks or more, it, we, we lose sight of what we need to do when. Um, so even in, uh, in, in teams that do sprints, we uh, like to do a week start just to uh, particularly check the, um, uh, the, the usage of time. Understood. Um, I see a few thank yous in there. Um, but I think that does it for questions, Neil, so I think we can go ahead and uh, just cover the last few things I wanted to do today. Um, if you liked uh, today's presentation, you'd like to learn more about uh, Lean IT and uh, some of the other uh, DevOps and other methodologies out there, please, I encourage you to check out www.quintgroup.com. That's where you can check out our entire library of white papers and uh, uh, we existing webinars and future webinars, the schedule, uh, up on there. And we also have uh, our list of all the uh, um, subjects that you see before you um, right now, so I encourage you to check out our website if you want to learn more. And the last thing is, you know, Lean IT is a, it's a big deal. So if you'd like to go ahead and get started, um, Lean IT Foundation is where you want to start. Uh, Quint offers it in various formats, uh, classroom, online, as a virtual class, and also self-paced e-learning, which means that you can uh, uh, get all the materials that you need for the class, uh, read about it, and actually learn the material on your own time, and then you take the uh, 
exam when you are ready yourself. So it's a really cool way for some people that are, uh, you know, not on a regimented schedule to, um, or on a regimented schedule to, uh, um, to take the course. So um, Niels is available. This is his information below. If you have any questions about uh, today's presentation or anything in general, I know we'd love to talk your ear off about uh, Lean IT, the week start, and really how to uh, make IT high performing. Um, as is info, feel free to reach out. Thank everybody for joining today. Have a great rest of your day.